Welcome folks, uh, time for another installment of the uh, Thermoquad uh, carburetor rebuild. Uh, what we'll be doing here today is just showing you a few of the external linkages and how to get them off before we actually separate this into three pieces um, and a few warnings or cautions if you will. Um, for starters make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. There's little spring clips here, horseshoe shaped clips that tend to go flying if you, you don't uh, have control of them. Also make sure you got some spares of those too because uh, if you lose one uh, you'll have to probably make your own clip if you don't have some. Usually in the rebuild kits they give you uh, new new clips anyway so just watch where these things are flying. Safety glasses. Uh, before we start turning screwdrivers and such. I'll just mention too that uh, what you see in front of you here now is uh, just a muffin tin for baking. Uh, you can head to just about anywhere. Um, any department store, dollar store, what have you. You could even use uh, uh, tin foil or virtually anything that will contain small parts. They, they work excellent too. You could actually use one of these. Mind you, you don't want to be cooking after you uh, soak small parts in carburetor cleaner or something, but just as uh, an organizer and keeping the, the parts separate, it helps to aid in uh, keeping them segmented so that when you put them together, uh, back on the carb that you'll you'll have a <coughs> excuse me half an idea of uh, what sequence you could actually number these or whatever you like I'll leave that up to your imagination you'll learn as you go okay now with this one before I even turn a screwdriver I'd like to point out some very important things about this uh, when you disassemble it uh, inside here are the two most important screws there's uh, one screw here and one screw here um, in order to get this choke plate to open up, you're going to have to trap the fast idle cam on the highest step. So you open the throttle and trap it on the highest step. That will allow the choke plate to open. And also, um, once you take this linkage off, they're easier to get out, but you can take a screwdriver straight between the linkage and the center of the carb on each side. But never forget these two retaining screws here. Uh, probably what's happened, a lot of people have really ruined their carburetors by not knowing they're hiding in here you'll only take the aid out here. I've already got them removed to speed up the uh, the rebuild video. Um, but you can count with me if you like. Uh, what I like to do is put a thumb, finger, or whatever before you start counting, otherwise you lose the, the track at which you started counting. <coughs> Excuse me, we'll go in a clockwise direction. So what we'll do is the outside perimeter first and then we'll, we'll count the two extra hidden ones in here. If this is absolute must. If you don't get these out of here and you start prying this thing, you should never have to pry one of these apart. But you can just, just ruin them totally. So let's start the count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you better have ten screws on your bench out of this carburetor before you even attempt to take it apart. Very important. I can't stress that enough. I imagine a a lot of them have been destroyed. Um, could be the uh, the phenolic uh, resin float bowl has been, been damaged from prying on it, getting a screwdriver in there and damaging the sealing surface. So make sure you remember that. Most important part of a thermoquad is those two um, screws in there. Okay, with that said, we can proceed with some of this other stuff. We'll just take out a few of the linkages for this video. Um, I'll, I'll try to shout out what it is that I'm doing. Like I say, very first thing, trap this thing on the fast idle cam. Uh, that the big screw there, that's a, like a counterweight for the fast idle. Trap it at the highest point. Be a good idea to have like a piece of plywood, maybe a, or in the case of a workbench, a nice uh, a towel or something soft to work on so you don't start uh, scratching the base or any of these other parts up. So once you get that fast idle um, screw trapped you can close the choke plate and you'll find a screw right here and that's what does the the overarm linkage here for the choke plate so it's a 3 16 socket I'm using and you just basically get in there and take these parts out so there'll be a little a little screw hex headed uh, screw and you just take that out of there like so it's still with the linkage so you got to play with it a little bit to get it to work once you get it out of there and we just take that off of there like so. Sometimes you have to wiggle and jiggle. So I'm just going to put them aside and then you can get that out of there like that. Put all the parts aside in your little muffin tray or whatever you have to organize. Um, we'll start with the top here first. 
make things as simple as possible. On either side, you'll have two plates covering uh, the air bleeds and uh, various other little tubes that come into the section under here where I'm pointing the screwdriver. And this is how you'll be getting your uh, metering rod tree and metering rods out of there. You want to make sure you get them out of there before you uh, uh, take the carb apart. So there's two little screws. There's one right in here. Another trick that I found uh, that works good for these little things is if you drop them in there or whatever, if you can get a little, what I call a magnet on a stick, you can get them in a telescoping kind of a thing. And um, you can, if you drop parts in there, especially if they're a ferrous metal, meaning magnetic, then you can uh, just go ahead and retrieve them with the magnet. Otherwise, a uh, small pair of pliers or actually uh, some tweezers, much like women used to pluck their eyebrows with, they, they work great for little parts and things like that. Dollar Store has most of the stuff. A little shaky today, too much coffee again. Okay, those are those two plates, and like I'd mentioned in here, there's air bleeds and uh, different uh, tubes that come into these. And uh, down in here is the metering rods. Okay, so you just take this clip off. It'll be a bit of a spring-loaded uh, action going on here. It usually doesn't fly up, but you can just keep a finger on it, make sure it's not going to come up. There's one screw and then the retaining clip underneath here, which holds the whole thing in there. There's the clip. Some are spring style like this one. Others are a solid steel plate. And then there you can take your meeting rod tree and your meeting rods out now. So you just grab it here, straight up. There's the meeting rod tree and the meeting rods. So we'll just put that aside. In a safe place, actually with the meeting rods and later when you get the jets out of the uh, bottom of the float bowls, keep them separate. You don't want bigger parts banging around in there. They're, um, they're pretty well a precision a precision item and you don't want to be bending or gouging them up. Also there's the spring inside here. That's the uh, vacuum, uh, the spring that overcomes the vacuum signal for the meeting rod tree. Alright, so a little bit by bit we're going. Um, what I'll do is um, instead of taking every nut and bolt and screw out of this thing, I'll just give you the the way that you can actually take it apart and, and get this thing cleaned and rebuilt without having to get into extra and excess. Unless you really want to get into every every place. Uh, like this linkage on the side that controls the choke and everything like that. There's a, sometimes a little spring in there and if you don't get everything assembled just 100% then your choke never works properly. So I usually avoid taking the shaft out. Um, there's only one reason you'd think you'd have to take that shaft out is because of this linkage here. It's uh, on the fast idle cam bracket and it actuates uh, with that linkage there it goes up through the shaft and onto the choke plate um, but once you get this um, that first overarm rod that I showed you there you can actually spin the rod as far as you want mind you you might have to play with the spring or whatever on the other side depending on what setup you've got uh, you may have the I think I believe it's on a Ford you have the thermostatic uh, coil spring on that side and you may have to disconnect the choke uh, for that kind but most of them are uh, they don't have the choke coil on the side of the carburetor. They just have a rod coming up from the, the cho um, bimetallic uh, choke spring in the intake manifold. So like I say, this is a very basic carburetor. You may find that there's other carburetors, and especially the one you might have, might have attachments and machine parts that, that fit on here or even in the back. But what this is, is this rebuild that I'm doing here is just for the very basics of thermoquads. For the rest of that stuff, I really don't have uh, any sample carburetors to show you, but you'll just have to do some research and perhaps somebody else has a site or whatever where they can give you that information. So with these little parts and pieces that we've just disassembled, um, like I say, we can, we can get this rod out of there later. I can show you how to do that without taking the whole shaft out. It, it requires that you take the top, the top part of the carburetor off, the air horn if you will and then you can rotate it and then you can get that out. I'll show you that later though. But any uh, extra things that you don't need on the carburetor, such as the vacuum hose for the choke pull off, you can just inspect that. Okay, this one is, well that came with this is a $25 carb I bought for parts. You can see that's no good for anything. Um, so you want to look at any place where there's uh, hoses that are old and deteriorated. It's a good idea just to put a new piece of hose on there anyways. So Another thing you'll be doing is you should really put a new choke pull off on there as well if you want the secondaries and the choke to work properly. I'll be showing you all that as well. 
Um, like I say, we'll leave this linkage here for later. You can leave your air door in there with a the spring already set and we can reset that later. And just the basic thing with carburetors is the parts that wear out have to be replaced or you're not going to get proper performance or the way it functions as well as uh, the adjustments. If it doesn't start idle properly and stuff then there's something wrong with it. Okay, like I say, we'll just leave all this side here except for the accelerator pump which I can do now. Um, it's just basically a clip and a link. Here's one of these little little clips. It's maybe hard to see in this video. I just got this thing here. But anyways, it's a horseshoe style clip. And uh, you just keep your finger on it and you can get a screwdriver and pull on it. Or you can use needle nose pliers if you can get a hold of it. But that's it right there. It's just a, a horseshoe shaped clip. If I can heat my hand steady enough. There it is. There's a, there's a few of these on this uh, on these carburetor linkages. So that's for the accelerator pump. Then all you have to do is you, you take that out. The, uh, the pump plunger is always spring loaded. That's actually what it does. And maybe while I'm at it, any time that it squirts fuel for the accelerator pump, it's a spring under the piston, uh, the piston cup and assembly that actually makes the squirt. The linkage actually holds it back and regulates the amount of squirt. But there's a linkage there. You just wiggle and jiggle until it comes out of there. Okay, then there's just one screw. I pre-loosened most of these screws in that just to make sure I wouldn't be fighting this thing for the video. So there's one screw there. It's not going to go anywhere. And while I've started on that, I always remember the things that gave me um, headaches and whatnot and things to look out for. If you notice before I start taking this thing off here, um, I don't know if it'll show up on the video or not, but right in here there's a... a a round steel uh, connector link and it's in the shape of an S. Just think Superman as views from the, viewed from the front of the carburetor. There's only one way to really put this in. It's got an offset on it. It's not exactly straight in line, the actual link. It's got a bit of a, a curve to it if you will. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at this thing, when you reassemble it, that you get the letter S. It's an English language. You might be viewing this from other countries, but you're looking for a shape like this as viewed from the, the front of the carburetor. So you start here and it's like that. If you put it in the other way, it's not the right way to do things. And it might even mess up the way the uh, accelerator pump delivers its, uh, its squirt of fuel there. But anyways, there's one screw that holds that in. Some of the tricks that I've learned along the way is uh, I don't want to lose things. Sometimes I'll put screws right back in there and keep them in place. But if you really want to clean that out, you can always put this in your uh, little muffin tin or what have you. Okay, what you're going to notice here too is taking the link off for the accelerator pump. This S-link, the, uh, the, the accelerator pump uh, piston rod here, it might jump down. It's not going to hurt anything. You've got the, uh, the check uh, valve assembly to hold it from falling in there. So it might drop a little bit just like you did there. Remember the letter S when you reassemble this thing. Very important. Okay. Now that's most of the top for you. Um, the choke pull off is another thing that you have to get the linkage off in order to get the thing disassembled. You can actually do all of this on the car as well, but uh, if you attempt any of these uh, parts change, like say if uh, you had a carb that's running okay but you need a new choke pull off, <coughs> excuse me, you can do this on the car. Cover the, uh, the top of the carburetor with tin foil or something to make sure that one of these clips or washers doesn't fall in there because otherwise uh, not only you'd be taking the carb and the, the throttle linkage and everything off, you might even have to take your intake manifold fold off to find that missing part. If you get a piece of metal in your engine running around there, it's just going to destroy it. So there's that part of it. Okay. Um, like I say, you don't have to take every little part. If you really wanted to get this apart, I believe it's a 3 16 uh, hex screw, machine screw that goes in the end of the shaft. You can take all this off, and there's usually a spring in here that... Uh, connects two of these arms that move. Um, I generally don't take this one off unless I have to. I usually just do the choke pull off one and then you can usually feed this through and bring it back and you can actually uh, wash this in carb cleaner or solvent and still leave this attached but if you want to put new clips on and everything by all means uh, do, it, do it the way you want to do it. Okay you just pick these clips off. If you get a hold of these clips when you have them, see I haven't lost any yet. If you cushion them when they come 
springing off of the shaft, then you can control them. But if you just go ahead and take a screwdriver and give them a thing without hanging on to them, they're gonna they go everywhere, garage, workshop, what have you. Okay, so you can see the link is pretty much falling off of there. Okay, so we'll just show you how I feed it out of there. Hopefully this one will come out. You just give it a bend and a twist. You don't want to force anything. You just keep wiggling and jiggling. Or if you, if you like, you know, you can... Uh, this one's being stubborn. Yeah, just in time for the video. Yeah, there we go. So you just turn and, and you can leave this on there. That way you don't lose the parts. You can go ahead and, like I say, disassemble. You can even take the washer off of that end if you want. Or, But if you want to put new clips on it, you can take it all apart. Just make sure they keep, keep them as sub-assemblies. Like put this whole linkage with the other clip and everything in one little part of your muffin tin and make sure that those parts stay relative, relative to each other. Alright, so, <clears throat> excuse me again, a little bit of a dry throat. Okay, so, there's another thing here, a three-quarter inch wrench. That'll, uh, take the, uh, the fuel line fitting of the carburetor off for you. I've already pre-loosened it, a three-quarter inch. Uh, you want to use a box wrench, a fully enclosed wrench, or, or a, a six-sided socket. I'm not a fan of 12-point sockets because they don't have enough contact area. Okay, so that's already loosened, and you just basically... There's a washer in behind here, too. And uh, this will help you get into um, cleaning everything out that's any foreign matter, any dried-up uh, gasoline which turns into varnish, but there, just, just keep them all separate. Don't let them bang around or anything, because if you start, you know, throwing things around, they get damaged, and then you might even have a leak. So, so far, so good. Um, anything that you have on your carburetor, you'll have to read up on if it's in, it, in uh, any extra than what you see here. This is as basic as they come, as far as thermoquads go. Um, there's really nothing on this. This is your, I could say, uh, the easiest one to work on because there really isn't much on it. Um, be very careful when you're you're working on any of the small parts, like uh, you know, mixture needles or anything like that. They're very, very delicate. You don't want to bang them or bend them. And also another thing you could do, <coughs> excuse me, well, I think of it is before you take these out. Uh, you could mark which is left and which is right. You could even put a piece of twist tie on one and then record it. Write things down or take pictures with your smartphone or whatever. You'll find it's amazing just if you lose track of what goes in what uh, sequence when you reassemble. It's usually in the reverse sequence of taking things apart. So assuming that I have this, I've, I have, I've taken the springs off here just to, to uh, speed up the video a bit. So you just basically unscrew them. Be very careful with them. Uh, don't let them bang or clunk into anything else. Uh, you could put uh, put them together in one of the muffin tins. So this is the left one. It would be uh, marked in some way. You could tag it if you wanted to. You could put a twist tag and a piece of cardboard on it and say that's the left one. And then uh, here's the right one. I always try to keep them, especially something like this, always relative to their bores uh, and the screws uh, that they go in because they're all they've been in there anyway. So you can interchange them if you like, but. I'm a stickler when it comes to putting things back together the way they were. Okay, so if you just keep a look around, take a look around rather to the to everything there. Uh, make sure all the linkages are out. There's another thing I can mention. A lot of the uh, rebuild kits will supply what they call Welch plugs. Um, there's a little aluminum plug in the end of this um, passageway here. Your fuel actually comes in through where I took the inlet nut off from the fuel line. It comes and travels along here one. It goes into here and then into the float bowl past the needle and seat, and this way it goes here. And there's another welts plug on the other end here as well. So if you want to really get in there and clean it out, uh, blow it out with uh, compressed air if you have it, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Or, uh, you, I was thinking too, if you don't have a compressor or anything, um, you can uh, go to like a computer store or somewhere like that, and they have a can of compressed air. Uh, you don't want to be spraying or anything volatile, but you know air is uh, is pretty safe. If you get a can of compressed air, then you can go ahead and uh, usually have as a spritzer tube or something to clean keyboards. You can get in there and you can blast it out with that. But any anything that just uses plain air, protect your eyes and the people that are around you. Um, let's see those two screws that are in there. 
I'm going to tell you one more time. I've, I've got to because too many of these things get uh, sent to the junkyard because of it. Um, they're right in here. One on this side in behind the choke plate. The choke plate has to be open or you will not see them. So one there and one here. These are the only two I have in here right now to, uh, to keep these three carb pieces together. And uh, just don't forget those. Those are number one priority. Okay, the rest of the stuff it'll, it'll fall in place as we go. Um, down in here, there's for the accelerator pump squirters, there's one coming out each side. They're little brass tubes and they've been calibrated. Um, I can take this screw out now, but I, what I choose to do is wait till I get the top off because usually there's a, a, a check weight type needle. I believe it's a steel one. It's been a while since I had one apart, and there's a gasket under there too, but we'll get into that later. Basically what this video is is to show you to get the uh, the linkages and things in preparation to separate the parts on this. Okay, so you just take another look around. Like I say, you can take this, any any screw that you want out and cleaned, you can go ahead and put it in your muffin tray or whatever way you can keep it safe, right? Um, like I say, well, this, this is a very basic one. You're probably going to have, especially if you've got one that comes in uh, 75 or later, we'll be having lots, lots of extra gadgets and things on it. Uh, probably a solenoid for the idle speed, um, things like that. The, the float bowl may be a bit different. On the front here, some of them, they're, they've been uh, machined out and they have a brass tube for a, a vacuum fitting or whatever, and some may even have a... some may even have a... a a float bowl vent. It could be a mechanical linkage type or it could be uh, an electrical type. Uh, you know, like I say, you'll have to research anything that goes above and beyond the model that you see in front of you now. Okay, so we just take a look around, make sure that there's no linkage. Like I say, it's your option whether you want to get into this and take the whole shaft out and clean it. It's your, your, your choice. Myself, I just leave it in. Not a big deal. The only thing that really needs to be uh, super clean is uh, all these little air passages that are in there, air bleeds and uh, different things, uh, they have to be totally clean. Uh, otherwise you don't get a, a very good running carb. Also in here, these, uh, if I remember rightly, those are the um, air bleeds for the secondary jets. Right up in here, two tiny little tube, brass tubes barely sticking up. Okay, so like I say, the accelerator pump, it'll come out. You have to tap this with a, uh, a punch and that'll get the accelerator pump and check valve out of there for you, but we'll do that on disassembly. I wouldn't want to do it now in case we uh, damage the phenolic float bowl. But you just take a look around in your carb and make sure that you got everything off. And uh, in car with, when it comes to carb cleaner, you don't want to soak any um, rubber diaphragms or electrical parts or anything like that. So make sure before you do any soaking that those are all uh, separated from your carburetor if they're just a bolt-on or some kind of a snap ring that holds them in. So we'll just take a look one more time around here, make sure that everything has been disconnected. Like I say, the choke pull off, you usually want to renew that if they're older. Um, I'll, I'll be showing you that as well. And you just go over the whole thing. And this, this link here, I usually take it off when I, I start to take the top off. I just rotate it and then I can rotate this lever here and then this rod will come out of the hole. Okay, so everything is there that we probably need to for this particular carb model. Uh, like I say, one in parting before I go on this video, do not forget these two screws here. Because otherwise this will become a paperweight, a big heavy one at that. So that's that installment for this uh, Thermoquad uh, video series. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. So take care, have a nice day, and bye for now.